Thank you, Chair. And again, I want to thank the witnesses very much for being here today. I think that uh, this has certainly shed a lot of light on the process, and I certainly w hope it will help the government in their deliberations as they come to the best decision for Canadians. Uh, but I'm going to take a moment now, and I'm going to um, bring forward a motion that I had put on notice earlier. And uh, I know that us as a committee, we had come to the conclusion that we were scheduled to complete the Arrive Can study uh, in very short order. And in fact, I know we were going to be moving to the line by line um, even as soon as uh, this coming week. But I believe that new information has come to light with the Arrive Can uh, situation that we simply, as a committee, just cannot ignore. And I will read you a communication from um, Ms. Dutt of Bottler uh, to the former CBSA Executive Director, Utano Antonio. And she writes, I wish I was reconnecting under better circumstances due to ongoing issues with the supplier, Dalian Enterprises, Inc., in joint venture with Coradix Technologies Consulting Limited and their subcontractor, GC Strategies Incorporated, Bottler AI no longer feels comfortable working or associating with any of the above mentioned parties in any capacity moving forward. We are approached by Kristen Firth of GC Strategies in early November 2019, who informed us that his client, the CBSA, asked him to reach out to us regarding starting proof of concept. After confirming the GCS CS, excuse me, did have business with the agency on buy and sell, Bottler began initial groundwork and monetary investment for the project from November 2019 onward. The contract for the project was finalized between the agency and Dalian in January 2021 and has been riddled with issues that have been flagged repeatedly by both Bottler's team as well as teams within the CBSA since. From the onset in 2019, we were informed that GCS would be the supplier of the vehicle, would act as the intermediary between Bottler and the agency, for which they would charge an additional percentage fee on top of our quoted fees of 350000 Canadian plus applicable taxes for the proof of concept pilot. In late 2020, GCS informed us that the contract would have, to, would have to pass through another company that he knew. After repeated requests, we finally received the attached email entitled FYI from GCS. The value of Bottler's contract had been cut by $16,336,000 with no explanation provided, as well as the agreement between GCS and Dalian also attached. At no point were we consulted by either Dalian or GCS regarding the terms or any aspect of this contract, and we never have provided our consent to the existing terms, which don't even specify our company's name. All the deliverable milestones and dates specified have been arbitrarily assigned without consultation with Bottler. This has already caused headaches and wasted unnecessary time for both the CBSA and Bottler's teams. CBSA HR Project Liaison has also raise concerns over the contracting. After we complete the ninth month of formal work, <coughs> Bottler has yet to be paid a cent, whereas Cordix received the first payment for Bottler's work 67 days ago and have submitted another invoice for payment. Both GCS and Cordex have tried to pass Bottler's invoice on to the other party and are non-responsive to follow up. Please find the attached respective email threads. So now we have allegations of identity theft, forged resumes, contractual theft, fraudulent billing, price fixing, and collusion, all with senior bureaucrats and three contractors, who, one who was in front of us during the Arrive Can investigation within this committee. We can't even verify the validity of the report because we were lied to during testimony. Subsequently, my colleague Larry Brock, the prosecutor, uncovered the AG was made aware of the investigation from the Globe and Mail prior to her testimony being shut down. Now, I know my opposition colleagues share this concern, and I want to thank my NDP colleague for the honour and responsibility of moving this motion after he indicated his intention in the Globe and Mail article to move a similar motion and to work with fellow Conservatives and opposition colleagues. I know everyone on this committee is a dedicated and honourable parliamentarian who wants to get the truth for Canadians.
Our concerns began simply in an effort to get value for the money of Canadians, to get value for taxpayers' money. But unfortunately, it has come to so much more than this. We must now get the truth for Canadians. We cannot conclude our Arrive Can study and must continue our pursuit of the truth. And so with that, Chair, I am moving the following motion today. That the committee postpone the deadline for recommendations on the Arrive Can study in order to extend the study for an additional four meetings in light of the recent reports that the RCMP is investing allegations of misconduct by three companies involved in the development of the Arrive Can app. Over the course of the four meetings, the committee will hear testimony that includes, but is not limited to, the following witnesses regarding the investigation, the evidence and its findings, and that the testimony heard during those meetings be included in the final report on the Arrive Can study, and recommendations being ex be accepted up to a week following the final week of testimony. Rudika Dutt of Botler, Amir Morf of Botler, Christian Firth of GC Strategies, Cameron McDonald, former CBSA Director General, John Ozowski, former President of the CBSA, Sergeant Kim Chamberlain of the RCMP, Aaron O'Gorman, President of the CBSA, Min Doan, former CBSA Vice President and CIO, Antonio Utano, former CBSA Executive Director, Vaughn Brennan Consultant, Jeremy Broadhurst, Chief of Staff for the Minister of Finance, David Yao, Dalian Director, and Anthony Carmenico, Dalian Director, Anita Anand, President of the Treasury Board, Jean-Yves Duclos, Minister of Public Services and Procurement, Dominique Leblanc, Minister of Public Safety, Democratic Institutions and Intergovernmental Affairs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président, and thank you, Committee, for your diligent consideration of this motion. Thank you all.